We're in the final days of the big board draft and underdog with 200k to first place. So I'm trying to build some unique things. And today, I think that means trying to chase down some of the most beautiful rookies you can imagine. The rookies that I like the most, the guys that maybe have been escaping me in draft. ADP is a social construct that we're going to throw it out the window today as we draft a team in the big board. Unfortunately, chock full of regulars here uh, was a really long wait for the room to fill. I think the big board, uh, because it's 95% filled, actually almost 96%. Uh, it does seem like there's a lot of uh, a lot of people have already maxed it out. I was trying to do a tournament last night. It took about 20 minutes to fill in the 10 o'clock hour last night. So uh, that's what I think you should expect right now if you're drafting a team on underdog, uh, because a lot of the regulars have maxed out their portfolios and I'm sure done very creative things for themselves. Uh, we are picking in the five hole here, so we'll see what we do. And uh, look, try to get some rookies. That's the main thing I'll say out loud. But besides that, who knows? Who knows? How bad do I want these rookies being in pick five? Going to be tough. Going to be tough. Dylan here doing a daily comment six. Thank you. Uh, to be clear, Dylan, I think they're more useful, these daily comments on the post uh, post live stream version of the video. <laughs> in chat, it just doesn't really say anything. But I appreciate the sentiment. I'll, I'll take the sentiment all day long. I feel like the actual value of the algorithm are perhaps a little bit less so. All right, we're on the clock here. Um, yesterday I saw Justin Jefferson go at pick eight in a draft, which kind of blew my mind. Look, if I'm going to get all the beautiful rookies, I got to start doing it early, right? So especially pick it at the five hole, Marvin Harrison, you're the number five pick in this room. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting them all. So this is what I did yesterday. And I'll tell you guys, um, what I did for myself really, cause it was a draft off stream. Just was like, you know what? I'm gonna have some fun doing this big boards about to close. Let me try to do something different. I just went on my way and got every rookie that I like in the draft. So this team yesterday included, I won't pull it up on screen. I'll just kind of read it out loud here. The team included Marvin Harrison, Jr. Malik neighbors, Romo Dunze, Brian Thomas, Jr. Troy Franklin, Ricky Pearsall, Brendan Rice, Jalen McMillan. Yes. My wide receiver car core was all rookies. In fact, in this one, also got Brock Bowers in this draft. Also got Trey Benson, Bucky Irving, Audrey Estime. One thing I didn't do is I didn't get Jaden Daniels. So that's my one regret I had yesterday. I took Josh Allen early as my QB and then also Kyler Murray for the potential Marvin Harrison correlation. And I thought that team, uh, that team was fun enough that, hey, let's do it on stream. So that's what we're going to try to do today. And of course, uh, a lot of people in the room who watch the stream, uh, we'll see if they ruin it for me. But that's going to be the goal. Uh, that must be pretty sick. I'm going to have that start today, but without <laughs> without Justin Jefferson. Uh, so we're doing it. And here you go. Bindle's daily comment number 40, uh, 4 to 35,000. I think it might be a little bit too many. I don't think you've left 4 to 35,000 comments. That'd be pretty aggressive. I would say maybe 4,000 I would give you guys, especially our, our valued regulars here. Zap, glad I could make it here. I don't know if you mean in the draft room or in the stream, but either way, I appreciate you being here, especially in the stream. Did one like that. Don't know about the EV, but it was fun. That's what we're going to do. We're going to try to have fun and no one touched the rookies. Yes, it's like strippers. You just got to hands off, please. They're all mine. Both the strippers and the rookies, I would say. Both hands off, not allowed. No touchy. Brees Hall goes at 11 here. I like that price tag more for him. So you guys know, me, me be, buying in on the Jets, a struggle for me still. Uh, if Brees Hall's going to go at the one-two turn, if Garrett Wilson's going to go mid-second round, you get me there a little bit more. That's right. Look no touch. Look no touch. Oh, your FFB holes. Okay. You've been drafted more cleanly lately, Dylan, and I appreciate that. You've been less B holes and more FF. <laughs> more fantasy friendly, less B holes. There you go. The man behind FFB holes. I would say for all you guys, uh, in a perfect world, you would all have the same usernames and handles on YouTube. So I could just go, ah, of course, that's SSJ262. And then I would know that. But I understand. You can't make it easy on me. I get it. Guys, also, uh, I will mention it, and I'm, I'm saying this, even though I'm worried the, the dozens of you watching live will go over that channel. ADP Chase is going live today right now at the same time uh, with all the big guns. I think it's Pete, it's Sam, it's Pat, I think his first show from having a baby, and then I presume Davis as well. Uh, so appreciate you guys watching this one, first of all. And second of all, I said it the other day, uh, here we don't chase ADPs. The ADPs come to us because that's how, that's how sexy this stream is. I don't have to go chasing them. I have to go worried about market data and Sam Sherman's PowerPoints. Now we hop in a draft room. We take Marvin Harrison to pick five. We pray, we pray nobody fucks us up for me in a room. 
In 140 drafts, I've chased after a Brees Garrett team, and this 11 spot gets it as if it's no big deal. That's what happens when somebody takes Marvin Harrison at pick five. <laughs> I think it's you're going to see the board get a little bit weird, and uh, we're seeing the board get a little bit weird here. Shout out. Here we go. Matthew, nope here for Spags and the Squirt Squad. Look, we lost. I think I said that, and then we lost two viewers. <laughs> so the hope is that, look, I hope they find the stream they're looking for, if nothing else. But again, look, I don't have to chase the ADPs, baby. ADPs, they come right in front of me, legs up. Like, <laughs> there you go. You get to see my legs here on the stream, but not my feet. You didn't see my slippered foot on that one. Devontae Adams, a pick 18. This draft has gone nuts. <laughs> He's got Devontae Adams at 18. What kind of bullshit is that? What is this guy throwing the draft, reaching for players? There you go. Watch the recording. Yeah, watch the VOD. All right, here we go, guys. I think we all know what time it is. It's time for Malik Neighbors to come on now. And Malik Neighbors, you're another sexy rookie coming. Our reports now, Colts want to trade up and get Malik Neighbors. We'll see. Um, I think that's, somebody asked me yesterday, or was it yesterday? Whenever I was drafting Anthony Richardson, I guess it was yesterday. Uh, somebody asked, hey, why not take Josh Downs here instead of Tyler Lockett? And that was a two-pronged thing for me. Number one would be Tyler Lockett, I think, is going to come up in ADP. He's getting a lot of that public content creator who posts a lot on social media steam uh, that I do think drives ADPs meaningfully, especially this time of year. And number two would be that, um, I think for Josh Downs, somebody is going to come in there that knocks him down to death chart. And I think as a result, he's probably a little bit overpriced right now. I don't think it's a bad price tag. I think there's an assumption that something isn't being added that's really going to blow things up. Malik Neighbors go to any, goes to Indianapolis. That's not only going to blow it up for Josh Downs, not going to blow it up for Alec Pierce. Alec Pierce would be the one who gets it blown up the most. It would get completely blown up for Michael Pittman. Like Michael Pittman is not as good as Malik Neighbors. I'll say that right now somebody who was heavily exposed to Michael Pittman last year. So... Um, I think for where things are looking right now, uh, I think that I think Josh Downs is a fine play, but if neighbors goes to the Colts, uh, that's going to greatly change that stack. And frankly, that team, uh, I, I don't know. I, I hope AR can make the most of it, but it's going to be a team where if AR is still running a good amount, they're also running the football aggressively with Jonathan Taylor. That's something where maybe you don't see as much volume going neighbors way. So that's, a little bit of risk for Indianapolis because I think they're a team that's not going to drop it back. Like CJ Stroud, I can see dropping back 40 times a game, throwing for 400 yards. I don't know if that's the case for Indianapolis necessarily. All right. Good. So all the rookies we like is still in play. Um, we do also have Sam Laporta here as an elite tight end if we want to do that. I don't have to be married to the rookie thing, but I'm also not picking again until pick 44. And I just don't think this guy's coming back. <laughs> Even though he's got a 46 ADP, I don't think in this room I'm going to get there. And I'm getting all the rookies, all the beautiful rookies. Romo Dudes is a beautiful rookie. So we have the top three receivers in the class. I know this is going to be unique. I'm confident in that. I don't know that we got the best value. Somebody, you know, people get Justin Jefferson with Harrison, with neighbors, with Odunze. But hey, we're living. We're doing it here. I can't title a video, I'm going to get all the beautiful rookies and I'm not, and then not get the beautiful rookies. You guys know my OCD with content. I fulfill promises here. Make dreams come true. Just jumped on MHJ 105 rookie draft. It is. Yeah. We're doing a dynasty draft. They, these guys don't know it. <laughs> They're drafted a bunch of dusty old vets, and I'm getting the future of the league right now in the palm of my hand. Oh, we're living a little. We're living a lot. We're living a lot. Can't wait for this NFL draft. Same here. Excited to see where these guys go. Excited to be disappointed. <laughs> but excited just to finally have the uh, the puzzle half solved where it's like, okay, now we know where these guys are going. Let's try to figure out where the depth chart's going to be, who can move up, who's maybe a little bit blocked. Um, that'll be the fun part of it. And I think really for me, a lot of the focus this year, um, especially it's part of why I wanted to wait on the Spags rankings. I just don't want to have to tear down everything after spending an ungodly amount of time writing 250 blurbs or whatever. Um, and also ranking 250 guys. It's also that for me, like I really would like to see, um, how I reevaluate these guys based on where they go. And I think that's the thing that I'm going to do bright and early this year where we have the analytics, we have the data, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to bury myself with guys that I was kind of tethered to earlier in the process. So I think we've been good this year about being nimble, about adjusting to this news item, that news item, how this affects uh, the top 30 visits, how that affects things, how the RAS testing, how that affected guys that I love analytically. And I think now the next pivot point is going to be, you know, where are these guys going and who can actually win a job and trying to project that. Colts got to get MHJ, bring him home. I mean, that would be fun. I'm sure the Indianapolis people would love that, but 
uh, you know, definitely the price tag would be tough because they're hoping to get to nine to get to neighbors and maybe you get neighbors at nine. You're definitely not getting MHJ at nine, no matter what. So that just helps someone create the winner in this draft. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't think that's true. Again, if, if the guy who I helped get the win in the draft is the Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson drafter, I, I'm happy that he could make that bet for himself. What like uh, this jets thing. I talk about it every fucking stream because it drives me nuts. I, I just don't think they're going to be a Super Bowl contender. I find that hard to believe. Uh, maybe they'll make a playoff spot, but you're asking a lot for the agent QB coming off an Achilles injury and a team too that enough disharmony last year as well that uh, this can it can go south very easily and these draft positions are not being treated like it can go south. Atlanta, hey, you want to take Bijan? You want to take Drake London? I'm willing to make that bet a little bit more even though similar, uh, I would say, to the Jets situation. Agent QB coming off an injury. Um, young guys rely on him around that. Better defense for the Jets for sure, but defense is still not the most sticky thing, even though having Sauce Gardner makes you a little bit stickier and good coaching makes it a little bit stickier too. So Wakey Wakey uh, did a team in the draft I was in last night off stream. Awful team there. Uh, it seems like he's on pace to be doing a weird one here as well. I know people, of course, uh, the underdog fans out there will go, he's one of the best drafters. He, he does draft some bullshit here. Not that I'm not drafting bullshit as well, but I do have to point out Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts is effectively some bullshit. And the team he drafted yesterday, I think, had like one receiver through 12 rounds or something. So that's why I'm a little predisposed to being like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Like, <laughs> But that's sometimes how it gets at the end of these drafts. AZ MHA makes me happy. Oh, yeah. Charles being a Cardinals fan. I, I think that's the most likely outcome still for sure. Likes up, show the love and appreciation. Yes, please hit that like button. Helps me out a bunch here, of course, competing against all the streams. Uh, now that BBM's coming out soon, the best ball streams are only going to get more competitive. So your love and support here doesn't matter a lot if you hit that like button. And of course, uh, if you subscribe down below, appreciate that too. But the likes honestly probably matter a little bit more. Helps us get seen by more people. And that is the goal here to, to make this a viable business rather than a passion project that I spend entirely too much time on, uh, which is currently what we're ebbing towards. All right. We got three rounds here. Really no rookies I need to go up and get, but actually do see something kind of fun we can do. Uh, we can have some fun with old Trey McBride. Build some Arizona stuff. Team so far, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunze, and Trey McBride. Ooh, we are feasting. We are feasted on rookies and young guys. <laughs> I like when people are watching a different part of the video. So enough shippers for everybody, Spags. No, I've already claimed them, and I was earlier in the video. We've moved on, but I, I still own them. Still, still claim them all. Are Rodgers still the best QB of all time? Not from an accomplishment standpoint, from throwing a ball standpoint. Eh, you're saying he's got the best arm ever? Or he's the best. Like, what's the metric we're defining that by? I don't. I don't agree with that. I think. Mar I think Rogers' sustainability over time. I'd rather have Brady still in that category. Um, overall, top ceiling arm. I'd rather have a lot of different guys over Aaron Rodgers. Even guys who are still playing like Stafford and Allen. Like those guys have better arms than Rodgers purely overall in terms of the power and the and I guess the ability to get it downfield. Maybe not accuracy for Josh Allen. Um, so I don't know. Rodgers also, again, was terrible the last time he was a fantasy QB. Like, you got to remember that that was the last time we saw him. That sound two years ago. It's a different offense. I get all that. But what, Nathaniel Hackett's going to be the thing that, ooh, boy, you really turned it around for Aaron Rodgers again. If that's a bet you want to make, more power to you. They're adding enough weapons that I see the, the pathway to it. It doesn't excite me very much. All right, on the board here, uh, some positive news items for Marquise Brown working out right now. Uh, with uh, Patrick Mahomes and Patrick Mahomes talking him up a little bit. Uh, we are not. So this is where we're running into some issues. I don't think we're going to get Brian Thomas back to me. And Brian Thomas is one of my beautiful rookie boys who I would like to have in the stable, in the roster, one of the strippers in the VIP room. Brian Thomas Jr., come on down. You're my wide receiver four. How many rookies can hit in one year? We're going to find out. All of them. MHJ, Neighbors, Odunze, Brian Thomas Jr., Trey McBride. The team is popping, even if we're paying some steep price tags. <laughs> we're paying, we're paying again to go back to the strip club analogy. Much like the strip club, we are paying very premium prices to get in the door and to go to the champagne room with all these rookies. But you know, when you want your rookies, you pay the price. We want our sweet boys. Rookie gift coming in. It's a baby stripper dance. I don't know what. I don't think we should combine those two things now. Rogers is definitely the best effort going deep guy. Jay Cutler wishes to be that good. 
I, I don't have Rogers 2023 numbers in front of me, but I would say, or 2022 numbers. Um, I don't think he was starting to deep that much at that point of the game. He was definitely more of a check down artist. The A dot was under 10 per throw. I think he was like seven or eight. Uh, I'm obviously, this is me talking off of data points from two years ago. So I uh, would have to fact check that, but even let's see, he played what one quarter last year, not enough to go off of, but where was his A dot last year for the one quarter he played? Oh boy. He had a negative 1.8 EPA on pressure plays. <laughs> Tough scene for Aaron Rodgers. Actually, I guess overall he did a negative 1.8 EPA because he only played pressure plays before he got hurt. So let's just say the 2023 numbers for Aaron Rodgers don't help that much. But I just don't think he's the guy that he is in, in some people's heads. Arm telling ever Mahomes, Marino, Rodgers. Yeah, Marino, I mean. I don't know. I feel like all those big statue S pocket passers. I, I don't know how you grade some of those guys. I feel like there's a lot, there's a big archetype there that uh, of guys that honestly, some that are huge busts too, like Ryan leaf had a cannon too. Um, but yeah, I was like, those guys almost don't exist anymore. The Ryan mallet, like Ryan mallet's like the last one I could really think of. That was, you know, <clears throat> Oh man, this guy's going to be able to just stand around and throw the ball with incredible velocity and depth. 2011 Rodgers, yeah, again, <laughs> 13 years ago. That's right. It's the priors, the priors and all the investment psychology that we talk about here, locking in things that because they've happened in the past are going to happen again. It gets less likely by the year that we ever see Aaron Rodgers have a true ceiling again. Again, I get making the bet. Where, where are the Super Bowl odds? I know the Jets last year had pretty high Super Bowl odds for the beginning portions of the offseason. We're like top seven at one point. Uh, right now, let me look at FanDuel Sportsbook because they apparently the top SEO result. Jets are Jets are plus 2700 and they're outside the top 10. I don't know. I just uh, I'm just not there, but I've talked about it enough here. I, I feel like I don't want to make this a Jets show. It's about rookies, it's about sexy fertile rookies. <laughs> not about aged ass Aaron Rodgers. Shout out to Marcus Russell, Jim Drunken Miller. There we go. Brock Osweiler, he didn't, yeah, Brock Osweiler did not really have an arm, though. He was just too tall. Crazy that there was a Brock Osweiler period, too, where he actually got a big contract and stuff. All right, what do we do with this pick coming up? Well, I, I have an idea. I'm not even going to look at the board. You might be able to guess what my idea is. <clears throat> if you know the theme of this video, if you've seen the guys I've taken so far, if you watched Splash Play, you know the guys that I enjoy in this rookie class. Kyle Pitts moving up, though. Pick 63 for Kyle Pitts. Mm -mm -mm. Terry McLaurin to pick 64. Just one of the most incorrect price tags here. If I weren't on this rookie bullshit, would have loved to have gotten some Terry McLaurin. David Montgomery goes. I think the chat might be on to me. Come on. I hate when it's like, I just want to make the pick of the guy. Like I just want to get to the podium and it's in here. We have Fluffhead just soaking up the entire clock to take Calvin Ridley. Just get me, get me my guy. Get out of the way. Move it. Joe Burr. Oh boy. People really loading up on elite QBs in this one. Uh, yes, chat. You're correct. It's Brock Bowers. 11 picks ahead of ADP. We got to lock him down now. Team so far though, a beast. Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunze, Brian Thomas Jr., Trey McBride, and Brock Bowers. Did we just win the big board? Did we just courageously win the big board by uh, just taking all the rookies that are going to have the greatest rookie years of all time? I think so. Anyway, chat. All these guys got it right. Cock flowers. Bowers are bust. Bowers come on down. Backflip and Brocky. It's Harry McBoran. That's just unfair. Charles, you can't root against me. <laughs> it's not... Love the team. Again, it's a fun team. That's what I saw last night where it's like, you know what? I don't love the ADPs I'm paying for all these guys, but I do think that it's still a, a nice situation to have all these top upper echelon rookies who are hopefully most of them going to get good landing spots. I think the risk point is just that one of Odunze neighbors in particular land somewhere where they're not an alpha target earner. I think that's my concern point. 
Uh, but still, like all these guys I like a lot, I think that they can come in and immediately be you know top receivers in the league to some extent. You know, probably more top ten than than top three. But Harrison Harrison's got a shot to be top three. All senior bowl team. But <laughs> some of these guys aren't even seniors. So no, no. Gene Daniels a lock. No, because I don't have McLaurin. I don't have the Washington bet. I, that's the one reason I kind of wanted to take McLaurin as my one vet at this point. Uh, I guess besides Trey McBride, so I could set up Jaden Daniels, but because I did not get Jaden Daniels in my draft yesterday, I have to admit that bum me out. Hey, last yesterday I took only rookies at wide receiver. I'm happy to do that again. All right, we're on the clock here. What are we gonna do? Obviously, correlation can be tough. I mean, this guy's not coming back to me, and he matters the most to my team right now. Uh, the James Conner would be an okay bet, too, uh, for a non-rookie. I'm taking Kyler Murray just because we have this nice little MHJ Trey McBride bet. Kyler Murray, I've seen go above this pick, so I actually think this is one of my less crazy uh, reaches here, but Kyler Murray is going to be our first QB. Uh, we have Kyler, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunze, Brian Thomas Jr., Trey McBride, Brock Bowers. I think, obviously, no matter what, we have Kyler to Trey McBride correlated. That's going to be good to go. But I think the hope is that even if Arizona does trade out of the fourth spot, does get rid of Marvin Harrison as a or the potential to get Marvin Harrison, that maybe they end up taking Neighbors as a consolation prize, Odunze as a consolation prize a little bit later in the first round, even Brian Thomas. I think that's still an out. So um, that's how I'm going to play this in my brain. But obviously, you know, the binary assumption would be Kyler Murray links up with Marvin Harrison Jr. in Arizona, and then they also have uh, Trey McBride. Of the Kyler pick, Kyler, Kyler. There we go. People want me to take Kyler, and you got it. A yummy team. I agree. We're doing some yummy stuff right now. And now we wait. Now we wait to see what we get back. Big board, though, we'll say if you got to get your entries in, uh, if you are trying to put some, 96% filled. And it does seem, again, like a lot of the regulars not putting in entries right now. So prepare for slightly longer wait times, but... Uh, definitely a good time to get in. Promo code Splash on there. Of course, double your deposit of 100 bucks. Also, have to give the plug to Probably. Uh, I'm really happy with the changes we made to the sportsbook filtering. Yesterday, plus 10 units on Probably. So uh, check it out, probably.com slash subscribe. Promo code Splash will get you 50% off. You also get the seven-day free trial of Probably on the App Store. Either search Probably or check the pinned comment where I'll leave it once again. And also start getting in your five stars and review for the next drawing of our guest host of Splash Play coming up in May. And Adam, by the way, did not see your DM on Twitter or Instagram. So please DM me at Chris Spags so I can book you. C-H-R-I-S-S-P-A-G-S if you can't figure it out. But please, or let me know your handle or something, but reach out so we can book. But I did see Brock do a backflip. I did indeed. Uh, Tyreek here, don't impede my status. Rip, rip my team apart. I'm not going to rip your team apart. <laughs> I'm sure you're doing fine for yourself. You're doing a little Detroit bet. Got Marquise Brown. I don't really see any issues. Trying to not do team reviews though, because I don't, you know, unless you're paying. <laughs> it's just gotta gotta set the bar somewhere because then I get more people trying to enter every room and that and they drive me insane. But I, I do appreciate you, Tyreek, and your team looks perfectly good by my standards. And of course, most to me, I mean, he's the guy I usually start my zero RB runs with or my and my zero RB runs with. So I'm happy with that pick too. All right, QB the King again doing some weird shit. Felt like he really had a nice scene brewing with that Jet stuff. Now he's moving around a little bit. Though Dak and Jake Ferguson, not bad. Feel like he could have gotten better at receiver by not taking Kincaid, but what are you going to do? I'm sure he may disagree. Pretty burnt out. 1K plus entries the last two years. Can't keep going the, uh, like the machine, Tyler. Yeah, I mean, look, I've, I've been there. Uh, I was at, I mean, I was definitely at the 1K level last year. The year before last, I think I did more. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I think that it certainly one thing for me spacing out one a day has been nice. Doing it only on stream for the most part. Besides when I really want to do one at night has been nice as well. Uh, whatever your process is, I think for me in general, it's like I'm going to try to keep it. At this pace, this point, this pace, and then once we get to August, I'm going to try to really blast off is going to be the goal. But it's hard. It's now a year-round thing, so definitely takes up a little bit more time, a little more effort. All right, we got Kyler here. 
So it'd be an okay pocket to start adding some running backs. It doesn't have to all be rookies again. We just need to get some good guys in. And I think Jalen Warren's a good enough guy. Not like crazy about Jalen Warren this year. And I will say too, uh, even though this is a rookie heavy draft, guys that I like a lot, Xavier Worthy and Adonai Mitchell do not really fit the criteria of guys that I'm like dying to get. So uh, I'm not mad about them going the pick before mine. Happy to get Jalen Warren to end our RB drought in round nine. Or no, round eight. Maybe we go RB again in round nine. We'll see. It's a tough one. It's a tough spot for me in particular. I got to think about what I need to set up. Because we got a lot of rookies we want to get in still. If we're going to get them, they're all batched up in ADP. So we have to go up and get them a little bit more. Ooh, we look at receiver. But have to get Lad now for sure. If we wanted to get him. Lad, by the way, getting sucked off by all the, the team GM review things. Uh, apparently, Lad, one of the most beloved players in the draft, which is not a surprise, but there we go. Uh, Trey Benson goes here. We thought I could get Trey Benson on the way back. Uh, he would fit my beautiful rookie criteria, not because analytically he's a guy that I love, because of the athletic testing, because of the fact he is probably going to be the top back off the board in the rookie class. Uh, he would have been a part of this draft, but he goes there. Nobody else that we haven't taken, I feel like, would fit my beautiful boy criteria yet. My beautiful rookie boy criteria yet. All right, just followed. Okay. I will figure out how to DM you then. <laughs> Never fear Papa is here. Okay, there we go. Papa with an A and two Ps. Said really getting the trademark friendly branding there where nobody spells it that way. Maybe Greek guys. All right, we are on the clock here. What do we do? What do we do? Could use more, more running back for sure. I don't pick again until 116. I'm going to take Brian Robinson Jr. here. This is getting tight. This is getting pretty tight for me. Could make the case I should have gone up to get one of the rookies, but I don't want to be dead at running back. So Brian Robinson Jr., logic for Brian Robinson, of course, is going to be uh, that he is a likely to be the between the 20s back, likely to be the goal line back for Washington. I do believe Washington drafts Jaden Daniels. I do believe they move upwardly because of drafting Jaden Daniels. So that's the logic for Brian Robinson overall as a pick, uh, but in general for a zero RB build, um, also one of my favorite zero RB picks. Yeah, people knew Brian Robinson, knew Brian Robinson. There we go. Rodgers is QB2, makes as much sense as Will Levis. <laughs> Rodgers is a QB overall. Okay. Oh, as a QB2. Okay. Uh, Levis, at least you're getting the coaching, massive coaching upgrade. Good coaching matters so much to these guys at the youngest points in their career. Levis was a willing deep ball thrower. Well, Levis also has great physical construction, if nothing else. So I think there is a logic to making a bet on Levis. I would personally rather make the bet on Levis and Aaron Rodgers. I, that might be sacrilege to some people out there, but I think the best bet you have in the Jets is that Brees Hall hits because the team is crushing and is in the lead and the defense is keeping teams at bay all year. So Brees Hall just keeps you know, having a lot of game situations that run out the clock. Garrett Wilson just funnels all the Jets production his way, which I think is a big ask when you have Mike Williams, maybe Brock Bowers, maybe Malik Neighbors there. Uh, but I think that's the bet you can make. But even if those guys go off, I don't think that means Aaron Rodgers goes off. So like, I'd rather take the shot on Will Levis who, again, can get the ball downfield and create value for receivers that we, that we, the market thinks are top 75 ranked players overall. Um, so if he's going to create enough production for those two guys, as well as maybe a rookie and he's got good coaching coming in, hopefully some Bengals learnings coming where Brian Callahan, a big part of why uh, Jake Browning was functional last year. I think he can make Will Levis functional. So I'd rather make the bet on Levis than Rogers. Levis is my late round QB 18%. Okay. I'm a little more, I think, my favorite super cheap guy. They're different price tags now. I do like Bryce Young as a super cheap guy. I've taken him a little bit less lately, but I think that he's a good guy. Dave Canales, again, uh, one of the things that came out in that Bill Belichick article, which I haven't talked about at all, but real interesting article on ESPN, why Bill Belichick did not get the Falcons job and didn't get a job in general. And um, they talk a little bit about Carolina. And part of the reason that Carolina did not want to go back and even consider Bill Belichick was they want the, the owner guy, David Tepper, 
wants to look at all the pass play data and then critique <laughs> critique the coach for how they're doing that. And he felt like he couldn't do that with Bill Belichick. Uh, so that's an interesting one for them. But getting Dave Canales is a big part for Bryce Young that makes him you know, my preferred a late round QB in terms of he goes at like pick 200. So he's about as late as you can get. And he was awful last year. And I wasn't in on him last year because I didn't think he was going to have necessarily the system to succeed. Uh, now he's going to have the system to succeed, I think. And that's a big part for him. That's why he worked at Bama. Um, that's why I think he'll work now. Uh, but point being, though, I think late QBs, if you're going to buy into them, it's that they're young and that they're getting a big system overhaul that's hopefully going to be for the better with somebody you trust. And for both Will Levis getting Callahan from Cincinnati and then for, you know, for young getting Canales from Tampa Bay, those are guys I trust who I think showed enough that I would have faith in. All right, Jared Goff goes to our guy, uh, Tyreek there, who has a Detroit stack. Troy Franklin goes at 114, so we will not get our most cherished part. The new is going to come. Well, let's see what this, what this fucker does. <laughs> All right, this fucker takes another rookie. I feel like they're now just taking rookies because they saw me taking rookies. It's okay. This is what innovation looks like. I'm going to go up and get Jaden Daniels now. I really was hoping I could get Troy Franklin and Jaden Daniels. We're going to make a Washington bet through Jaden and Brian Robinson. Might take Dotson at some point, but I don't really care. I'm, I'm okay not taking Dotson. The bet's on Jaden just being good, and I, I, can't, I can't have another perfect, beautiful rookie draft without having Jaden Daniels. So add him to the list. Uh, let's give the team a read because I've not done that in a minute. Kyler Murray and Jaden Daniels at QB. Jalen Warren, Brian Robinson Jr. at running back. Wide receiver, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunze, Brian Thomas Jr. So creme de la creme of the rookie wide receivers. Tight end, double elite tight end, or I guess Brock Bowers, outside of the range of the, the elite perhaps. But Trey McBride, Brock Bowers, a tight end. So we're done at tight end, unless we have a real luxury pick like a Zach Ertz in the 19th or 20th that I want to do uh, for correlation with Jaden. That's it. Then guy at pick sevens being a butthead. I, I, he, well, he's a real fluffhead. I think he noticed me taking rookies and undecided he wanted to do rookies. Though maybe he also is somebody watching the stream and was upset that I <laughs> gotten annoyed with him taking the entire clock to end up taking Calvin Ridley. Who knows? Either way, we're getting our guys. Troy Franklin, though, fucking 11 picks out of ADP here. Hurtful. Hurtful. Heard a little rumblings. Bill may come to Dallas to piss the crafts off. Well, I don't think it's to piss the crafts off. I think the crafts and uh, and the Joneses are fans or, or friends rather of each other, if not fans of each other. Um, I think, but that's the rumor is that like Belichick's holding out. That's what the article talked about on ESPN as well. He's holding out for Philadelphia, the Giants, or the Cowboys. Things like all of those three uh, could be available after the end of this year, which I think is decently log logical. Philadelphia apparently was considering bringing Belichick in, um, which is not great for Nick Sirianni, but they were thinking about it. But they didn't want to overhaul everything like you would assume you'd have to do with Belichick. But that was the gist of the article. If you don't have the time to read it, it is worth reading it, I would say, especially because the guy is one of the most important characters in football over the last 25 years. Um, but basically the gist of it was that he, all the teams felt like he didn't want to change his style enough uh, to be, you know, to fit into the, how they want to run their organizations. And that kind of left him, you know, he wasn't even the top three contender for the Falcon shop. He was at number four. Ty J Spears, not a bad pick at this point. Um, Devin Singletary, not a bad pick either. Like nobody we have to jump up and get. Is Tajay worth a little bit of a value here? I'd rather have Singletary than Tajay, I think. Though, you know what? We have... Nah. I'd rather have Singletary than Tajay. I think Tajay's an okay pick. Just think he should be cheaper at this point. All right, so we have a 2 3 4 two. You know, We're going to have to make it up a receiver, but we like some late rookies, so hopefully that'll work out okay. Yeah, Kraft told Arthur Blank to not trust Bill. That was the, the headline takeaway. Though within the article, Kraft and apparently through his spokespeople denied that vehemently and said that he did talk up about you know, Belichick, whatever, talk him up. And then Belichick and, uh, excuse me, not Belichick's spokespeople didn't talk, but then people close to Belichick uh, talked to the reporter. And then for Arthur Blank, the, the Falcon spokesperson was also like, oh, Arthur Blank was talking so positively about Belichick. He liked him a lot. So that was sort of the main things, but... They are close friends, which the article points out, and I think has been covered in media before. And it does seem like either Arthur Blank heard stuff before from Kraft or Kraft gave him like the candid take and is just like kind of walking it back because you're not supposed to do that. Like that's actually illegal and, and real jobs. Like you're not supposed to give somebody who left your job a bad review. Like you could talk about things factually like, oh, you know, they didn't show up to work for these periods where they were booked. 
like that's okay, I think. But to go like, oh, they're a bad worker. I didn't think they did a good job. Like it's actually, I think, a crime, or at least it was a crime that you could sue for. Um, so I don't know. I don't think that applies for head coaches, but like a, a weird thing for sure. He needs a precision passer. He's he's also just needs to not think that his offense is going to work well. Like he would need in this class, he would need a JJ McCarthy type. And then somebody who's like a, a safeguard kind of OC. Like I think Brian Schottenheimer is kind of that though. He did show a little bit more ability to adapt and be a downfield uh, kind of team more in Dallas last year. But I think that's kind of what you're looking for. Or Greg Roman would be a good example. Like you, you know, these guys are just going to protect the ball and then take a few shots downfield very strategically here and there. Uh, but even that, like, can he, is Belichick going to do that? Cause he's not shown any ability to like hire people that actually are good at offense. He just hires guys that he's cozy with um, that, you know, not the way to get better at things, I would say. Let's see, real. The fans people didn't want Bill in Atlanta. I agree. I mean, it would have been good for Bijan, I think, but but yeah, it would have you know probably been a lateral move from Arthur Smith's offense. I, I think is a safe assumption for sure. Let's see what we're gonna get on the way back here. Hope Hopkins gets traded midseason. Why? If they bring in neighbors or something, sure, but. I think what they're building right now is a logical approach. Then they're doing the thing that teams are doing that we talk about from a team construction standpoint. Teams want big twos at receiver, maybe big threes if you can get it. Uh, and they got a big two and, and maybe can get a third if they do take neighbors. I don't think they're, I don't know that I'm sold they're gonna, but they're live to do it in the position to do it. All right, slow slow part of the draft here. I feel like this this turn each time just feels like it's taking an eternity, which of course makes sense given that there's more people on this side of the board than there is on the other side. But ugh, don't think Bill would have signed Kirk. He'd have signed Tannehill or some shit. Well, it, supposedly he was going to yield control to the GM they brought in, who was formerly, I guess, in the Patriots organization. I forget the guy's name. Smith, I think, was the GM's name. Um, also worked with the Broncos, I think, and the Niners was what the article had said. Um, I don't follow front office moves closely enough. Coaches, I follow pretty obsessively. Front office stuff, I don't know. It probably doesn't matter that much to me. Um, but yeah, I would say for that, like supposedly Belichick was going to defer to this guy. Uh, but, you know, whether he actually would defer practically or not, who knows. And there's also the things, too, that coaches like defer in terms of the personnel picking. And then they kind of like subterfuge the guy and like keep guys on the bench, keep guys lower on the depth chart because they're like sniping with the front office guy. So I definitely get why as a front office, even if you're, you have Belichick going like, I'll listen to this guy. You can do whatever he's going to like, you worry about the power play. And, and I think there's going to be less of those in like future generations where teams now are just built to be, you know, the front office is their job. The analytics department works the front office and the coach and kind of lands somewhere in between on a lot of the stuff. Uh, Back in the day, though, like in Belichick's era, it was all about the political subterfuge. So, like, I'm using the word subterfuge too much, uh, but like, uh, it's too much. But like, basically, you know, the guys earning more power and like stabbing guys in the back to become the GM and the team president and the coach. And you maybe don't want that in your organization, or you know, maybe there's just a concern about it in this, you know, this version of the NFL, which, much like a lot of things, you know, more communal, more more community minded kind of stuff. We have a two, three, four, two here. We do need to start getting receivers in and Dotson would also make sense here, but I still am on the rookie thing and Xavier Leggett is a beautiful rookie. We're going to take him. Xavier Leggett, come on down. You are our wide receiver five, two, three, five, two here. Still got to make it up at running back, but I thought we needed the fifth receiver more. And again, with just this room and them seemingly aware the symbiosis of the room, knowing that I want every rookie, uh, they are maybe making it hard to get a few that I like. Leggett, come on down. Do the ratio of drafters on that side of the board. You're welcome. Follow me for ADHD. Nice. Thank you. It's also, I think it's, it's a longer board and then more guys using the whole clock on the side, which is okay. They're entitled to their 30 seconds, much like you in bed watching this video. You're entitled to their 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, just a good, good insult to the <laughs> everybody's ability. It's a premature ejaculation. That's how you get the viewers up. Do I have a 20th round Kareem Hunt? No, no, no. He luck boxed a situation that was should have been there. It was only there because of injuries, so no. And they've replaced him in that situation. Deontay Foreman's now there doing 
the same bullshit goal line roll. Hunt is, I think, objectively a terrible pick. I think Zeke is also not a great pick, but Hunt is like taking Fournette right now. Taking guys who don't have jobs right now, and this, like, I just wouldn't do it. Even Zeke last year, like, Zeke paid off relative to the guys that didn't have jobs at running back, and he still, like, didn't matter for the overall best ball ecosystem. So, I, I just, not for me. Yeah, being a free agent at this point of things is not a good sign. Especially when, like, this year, teams also move to get running backs in pretty fast. Uh, all right, Jahan Dotson still hanging around. That is a nice pick at this point. Oh, Jerome Ford hanging around, also a nice pick. Marshawn Lloyd is a beautiful rookie boy, though, and I, I don't know. Oh boy, he's one. Of, he is one of my beautiful rookies. He's he's one of them. He's one of my top guys in terms of the pageantry that I put up here. I gotta take Marshawn Lloyd. I've got enough Jerome Ford to last a lifetime. Team so far two four five two. Kyler Murray, Jaden Daniels, a QB, Jalen Warren, Brian Robinson Jr., Devin Singletary, Marshawn Lloyd, a running back. Wide receiver, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunze, Brian Thomas Jr., and Xavier Leggett. The tight end, Trey McBride and Brock Bowers. So you've gotten pretty much every rookie I value besides Troy Franklin. So I feel good about that part. <laughs> Why well, take Hunt when we have A.J. Dillon? A.J. Dillon's got a job. A.J. Dillon's beloved in Green Bay. He's great for morale, both for the people and in general. Take Foreman, 20th round. Ugh. <laughs> Could. Good. I, I would you would I would not rather Foreman late to be clear. I think Ford is a much better pick. Ford again had massive games down the stretch last year while still yielding the goal line role to hunt. Um he was very good and he's also had a lot of higher ceiling than people realize, including in the preseason a couple of years ago. He had like a, a 10 target game. He's he's a legit player. They both are gonna get squeezed by Chubb to some extent, but um, I'd rather have Ford because I think that he's a much more valuable lever off of Chubb. Whereas Chubb coming back from an ACL is, is sad to say, but he's going to look a lot more like Deonta Foreman in terms of like what he can do. Everybody just loves Foreman. What do we see more 20th round Royce Freeman? Now he's signed for a year in Dallas. You'll probably see him a little bit. Yeah. That, that pick though is it's so odd. Like Freeman's the guy you sign um, in, I don't know, November when you realize, Oh, we don't have any depth at running back. We have to add somebody a bizarre move. He right now would be the goal line back, but you know, the assumption is they can add a Braylon Allen. They can add somebody. They can add a Benson. Obviously, a Brooks would be the higher-end version of that. Oh, Sammy with a new name here, Telesco Television. Good morning to all the best ball weirdos out there. Let's go. I'm thrown off by Telesco Television. Are you doing a channel for yourself, Sammy? Is that what we're going to do? Rather, Oh, rather than Hunt to take form. Okay, I thought you were saying Ford. People don't like Jerome Ford, which I, again, he went at pick 150 here. I think that's batshit. Ford is one of the best picks right now for a zero RB room. We're just trying to get these backfields where there's somebody who's got a role who can earn a little bit more of a role. Um, Chubb recovering, Foreman not being that great. He's still good enough to, to get there. Uh, but Ford, to me, just a, a hidden gem. How was Ford uh, analytically last year? Let's look this up. Now I'm going to be like, oh, Ford negative EPA. Mm, Jerome Ford. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> Jerome Ford, negative 0.2 EPA per rush, negative 0.15 EPA per pass, 60% avoided tackle rates. So not bad there. Uh, earned targets at a decent clip, 21% target route run rate. And red zone work. Actually, red zone work wasn't bad for Ford. 0.9 red zone rushes a game, 0.4 red zone targets a game. But yeah, not a plus EPA rusher. That's a bummer. My eye test for him would have been positive, but I guess he wasn't. We're a lot of kind of drag and ass games in the middle of the year, which might have been part of the reason. And that's part of why they brought in Hunt initially. So, eh. Need to win one of these big contests so I can quit my job for a much easier one so I could fill every day with my lovely online community. <laughs> that's that's the dream, you know. Dotson goes to 159. At a certain point, Dotson had to go. And at a certain point, I would have taken him at 164. But it's okay. Dotson to me, I think the least important part of a Washington stack, if you're trying to do it, most important part, probably for me, Jaden Daniels, uh, then Terry McLaurin, then Brian Robinson. But I think a rookie comes to Washington and displaces Dotson to some extent. Dotson's fine, but in this room, I just didn't feel like I needed him. 
Wilson, Mims, uh, two guys here. Mims possibly benefiting or possibly benefiting from uh, Cortland Sutton holding out. Mims would certainly, if he can hold on to that job, uh, move up. Uh, is there anybody I have to go up and get that I like at rookie or as a rookie? Uh, not really here. I think I'm going to scoop the Mims value as my wide receiver six. Year two guy who the blocker was Jerry Judy and now Cortland Sutton's holding out. That wide receiver without Cortland Sutton is uh, him and Josh Reynolds and Tim Patrick. So there's really nobody there to keep Mims off the field, uh, barring whatever rookies they add. They should add a rookie, you would think. But if Sutton forces his way out of town or just holds out, uh, he would be the one holdout that I would just go like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, oh, you want us to negotiate on? Uh, can you find a trade partner? Like, I, I, Corlin Sutton, no disrespect to him, but he just benefited from being uh, the red zone safety blankie last year for Russell Wilson. I, I don't think he's got a whole lot of talent at this point. Say you could quit your job at 200K before tax is not enough for most people to quit their job, IMO. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I've been working for myself for seven months, and that's, uh, not making any money or uh, well, not making any money to pay a salary from probably, but it's all about, you know, what you have going into that process. And then hopefully you're, if you have a supportive partner uh, at a certain point too, also helps if you don't lose, you know, 25 K to your former dickhead employers who drove, who drove football it's outsiders into the ground. But yeah, those are, those are separate things, probably unique problems to me to have. It's 200 K. You have to come up with another revenue stream. You have to think of something to keep yourself afloat. Uh, but 2462 here, not the greatest pocket for anything, really. But, you know, we're getting our beautiful boys. This guy is still a beautiful boy to me, even though the bloom has come off the rose a little bit. We'll get Bucky Irving, 2562, Kyler Murray, and Jane Daniels, a QB. Running back, we have Jalen Warren, Brian Robinson Jr., Devin Singletary, because we have to have some adults in the room. Uh, Marshawn Lloyd and Bucky Irving, so two of the guys I've probably stood up for running back. Uh, the most, even though Bucky Irving has gone the wrong way after the combine. At wide receiver, we have MHJ, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunze, Brian Thomas Jr., Xavier Leggett, and Marvin Mims Jr. Uh, so we have a good amount of juniors in the room once again. Trey McBride and Brock Bowers. I think this team is an interesting one. A few pockets I wish had been different, but for the most part, got the majority of the guys that I wanted to get here. Feeling good about them, getting the last shot at the rookies I have some faith in. And we'll see how their ADPs move after the draft. Hopefully positively for me. Let's all move to Thailand with 3K in our bank account. Uh, so somebody's somebody's pumping up the lady boy business <laughs> with that one. Let's all go to Thailand with 3K in our bank accounts and recruit some lady boys that need some solid curries and other Thai dishes. Hard to see other beautiful boys if we don't see them shirtless. I'm, ah, I guess that's the flaw in the process. I did not show all these guys shirtless as we went. You'll have to use your imagination. I, Bucky Irving shirtless, I don't think it would be a good time. Bucky does not have the build for this. Bucky Irving shirtless. I'll look it up in a tab and see if I could find him. Oh, apparently his Twitter pick is him shirtless. So, all right. I stand corrected. This is not big enough for you guys to see, though. But here you go. Here's... Uh, Christopher asked for it. Everybody blame Christopher. Bucky Irving shirtless. Bucky, a.k.a. Marquise Irving. Here's a question. Is he a better prospect if his name is Marquise? Like if he just goes by Marquise all the time? I think people would be into that. I like Bucky. I think Bucky's a more fun name. You're selling more merch to kids if your name is Bucky Irving. Bucky Bucky indeed. BBM win and I'm deaf quitting and relocating. Where'd you relocate to, Tyler? Another part of Texas? Somewhere else? I think if I won BBM, we'd probably move back to LA. Because we could finally afford to do that. But, you know. Hard to say. Hard to say. I actually have to reply to our guy Fareed Shahid, but I think he was like in, he said he was in South America or something. I saw his DMs on Sunday. It was like I was with a kid and just didn't think to reply. Um but he was like in South America for months. So having a good time. Korean moves to San Diego. The BBM winner, BBM four winner, Fareed, uh, goes to South America. I think his girlfriend's in South America or something. Bucky's a downgrade from Marquise. Marquise Irving like sounds like a star player or whatever, you know. Yeah, Marquise, especially Marquise spelled like that. Marquise spelled like that. I'm like, wow, this guy, 
You're, you can't bring this guy down. <laughs> you can't stop him. Bucky is the Winter Soldier. That's true. Bucky Barnes. Bucky seems like a sidekick, not <laughs> a superhero. I think Bucky Barnes has some good adventures, but that's fair. Uh, Audric Estime goes to Don't Impede My Status, another of our beautiful boys who will not be added to the portfolio, unfortunately. Estime, though, just no good top 30 visits for him is the bummer, but believe in the talent. And some people carrying the water from too. Uh, my pal Kyle Dvorak over at NBC uh, tweeting about both Estime and Bucky Irving yesterday, um, and both are pretty exciting. Uh, this has not been one of my historical guys, but in this room, we could use one more running back. I've talked a lot about the top 30 visits that Ray Davis is getting. They're too good right now. So uh, he is becoming a beautiful boy for me. Would not shock me if out of this rookie class, I guess besides Benson and Brooks, if Ray Davis gets the best outcome. I think Marshawn Lloyd is live to get a good one as well. Uh, Lloyd going to the Bucks maybe would be kind of a decent outcome for him. Ray Davis, though, Bucks, Packers, Houston, like they're all in the mix for him. You can land somewhere pretty nice with at least shot of contingent value, if not actual value, chance of earning a spot in the backfield. Mm. I didn't see if Tyler said where he was going, but there we go. So I'm trying to read the chat at the same time. Chat's flying by. I appreciate all you guys in chat. Of course, a splash play. I would say the best community in best ball, at least in terms of the ones that are of reasonable size where you can hop in and feel like your voice is heard. So please do subscribe down below. Hit that like button. Uh, leave a comment as well after the fact. Helps all these things help the YouTube algorithm out. Help me get seen by more people. And that is the goal here. So please subscribe. Hit that like button. And of course, promo code splash underdog, double your deposit up to 100 bucks. And probably you want to change your life in sports betting. I've got to tell you, man, sportsbook filtering on there is like a legit game changer. I put in six NBA bets yesterday, just like last minute, because I was like, let me just try and see what's on DraftKings right now. Five and one on those bets. Very happy with how that product is looking right now. Um, and really, yesterday, I think, was one of our best days. One of the best days I've ever had with content picks with MLB. Hit a home run bet. Mickey Moniak, we hit a home run bet for, which not a name you hit home run bets for a lot, <laughs> I don't think. But Mickey Moniak. Terrible name. Chat rats. Chat rats. The rats are out. The squirt squad, the chat rats, subdivisions and brands. It's like the NWO and NWO wolf pack, perhaps. Who knows? Oh, God. Three more rounds left. Well, after this one. All right, on the clock here, Miles Sanders, a nice pick. Again, ambiguous backfield for Carolina. Miles Sanders just mispriced right now, given that it is going to be a competition there. Jalen McMillan, not formally one of the beautiful boys, <laughs> but is a guy that I think is getting a lot of good visits. I've talked about, I think he's the Chiefs guy, uh, but also things linking him. I think actually Tyler was tweeting about this. Things linking him to Buffalo, things linking him to Cincinnati. Um, he's getting linked to a lot of potential high-octane offenses and a lot of which have open opportunities. Cincinnati, Tyler Boyd gone. The slots open for McMillan to hopefully come in there. Uh, McMillan as well. Again, the KC one, I think, is a really big one for him. Uh, so still think he's the weakest of the UW wide receivers, like Odunze I took earlier. I think he's really good. I think he won me over a lot throughout his combine and testing. Um, besides that, I would say that Jalen Polk actually looks pretty live as an outside receiver. Jalen McMillan, though, was pretty decent in this offense, just not as much this year because he was hurt. So... That's the thing with McMillan. Leg up is horny for Warren. Okay. I don't know how you could be horny for anybody in an Arthur Smith offense, but sure. The big board filling soon. Are you going to do a second draft today? No, no, no. No, no, no. One, one draft and we're done. I'm hoping actually that people just don't do drafts as much in the next few days. I'm hoping we get to Friday of the big board not filling, but I think it's possible it doesn't fill today. Again, especially if a lot of the regulars have filled. Uh, but right now we are at we're at 95.8%. It was at 95.7% all morning. So I'm hoping we get to like 97 tomorrow, and then we'll have a draft tomorrow, and then maybe not one on Friday. Though the little board is still going, so maybe still one on Friday. But generally on splash play, and especially when BBM is open, drafts your money to Friday, 11 a.m. So uh, that is the promise of the videos, and that'll keep going on until we get to uh we get September. Superflex, please. I actually, I was thinking about that this morning. 
they must know that Superflex is like not as popular because I I've talked about it. I, I hope that for you guys out there who love Superflex, you get a tournament. I'm sure you will for the main stuff, but if not for the big board, uh, I just don't enjoy Superflex. I think it's so much less fun for me. Uh, but you know, I, I'm ha I want people to have whatever tournaments they have. If there were Superflex and that was the only draft, I would do a few. Yeah, Superflex is the least fun to me. My concern about Dune's potential landing spots. Uh, not really, not at this point. I think for me, I'm still mostly drafting on this guy's going to get your good draft capital and he's talented enough. Um, you know, and I think those go hand in hand with you know, the top 30 visits, the RES stuff, and hopefully some of the analytics stuff though. I have dialed that back relative to just trying to read the markets better. Um, for Odunze, the concern is that he goes to like Chicago and then he is the wide receiver three. I think it's not great for him, but it is two older receivers with him. So maybe he can leap somebody or, or still prove himself amidst those guys. I think that's fine. Um, oh, dudes, they go to the giants. Wouldn't fill me with a lot of joy either. Uh, but I think if you start worrying about that too much, you could talk yourself out of a player and then they can go to the nut landing spot. If Odunze goes to the bills, he's probably going, I don't know how much higher he can go in a draft, but he's maybe going to the third round, second round. So trying to still play best outcomes for guys. I like, especially when you're taking them. Like if you're taking them, you're just making a bet. They're going to go somewhere good. So I would say for this bet we have today, it's like, Harrison goes to Arizona. Hopefully we're pairing him correctly uh, with Kyler Murray. We have Malik neighbors, maybe going to the giants. The, I don't know. Odunze going to Cincinnati who trades C Higgins. <laughs> I, I don't know what the exact scenarios would be, but I would think that's how I would be trying to view any of these things is that uh, you're getting the best possible outcome if you're taking the guy. So I'd have to really do some mental gymnastics to think about what these outcomes would be for all of them. MHJ to Arizona, an obvious one. I guess neighbors to the Chargers would be another obvious one. Um, Odunze to Tampa Bay, would he be blocked? Odunze to Carolina? Eh. <laughs> but, the, but that kind of outcome. Odunze to Washington, where he's playing outside with McLaurin. It'd be bad for McLaurin, but that'd be huge for Odunze. Playing with uh, you know a guy like Jane Daniels. So that's the hope. I'll right, we'll get some chats in a second here. One more pick coming up. 2672 at this point. If anything we want to take with Kyler. I'm not going to do the Dorch bullshit. Ugh. Not a great pocket. Not a you know what, Dylan Labe, not one of my preferred rookies. But he's a beautiful boy. I'm intrigued by him. I think he can land a third down back roll somewhere decent, and he's gotten enough visits with teams that would be decent giving him that. Uh, so I'm taking Dylan Labe here to close out at running back. 2772. A couple more picks left. We'll figure out what we do in a moment here. All right, chats. Thoughts on Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson team? Um, I think it started out well. I think after that, not, not too crazy about the guys he took later on. It's fine. I think he had a good shot to build a really nice team, and instead he built an okay team. But also, I'm not a big Jets guy, so. Ugh. But it's unique. More unique. New Orleans doesn't have a ton of draft capital this year. With that uh, said, what are your chances or thoughts on Ace Perry's chances as a year two breakout? I think he's it's good. I mean, he was one of the best receivers analytically in the EPA metrics I talk about. Uh, he had over a one flat EPA per target, so to create that much value, obviously not getting a ton of work. I mean, overall, Perry had. Perry had 36, actually 36 snaps a game is not bad, uh, but only, only 1.8 targets a game. So we're not talking about a lot of volume there, but he showed a flash. The issue is now they're bringing in a lot of guys that are just going to take up some space. Uh, bringing in St. Brown, Equinemia St. Brown, bringing in Cedric Wilson. Those guys take a few potential reps away from him, but um, if they don't add a guy in this rookie class, I think he's in well, in, well, he's well positioned to earn a role. And if he does earn a role, he produced. So uh, but again, he's got to be a better target earner, but hopefully not having Michael Thomas there. I'm going to help him earn targets better. And be in year two. It certainly doesn't hurt. They'll lobby the people's champ in April. I mean, I was on him early. I, I feel like I should have maybe pressed my lobby advantage, but you, you, know, you know, a New Hampshire guy coming up to the NFL is like a little bit tough. All right, 2772 here. No real needs. I mean, I guess at this point, well, no, because we're taking we're taking beautiful boys, and we know there's a few beautiful boys left. Ben Sinnott being gone would have maybe been an option. Brandon Rice still one of my most beautiful boys. 
I think he's guaranteed a decent landing spot, you know, at least a team that's good, if not one where he's going to have to fight his way up the depth chart. But Brendan Rice, to me, I think has been one of the seals of the draft, and him at round 19 has been a too big of a part of my portfolio, but I, I'm happy to keep doing it. Is it a Denver feels fun? Hmm. If they were to add Bo Nix and Odunze, I would think that'd be a really big win for them. That would quietly be a fantastic draft for them that nobody would realize is a fantastic draft. Uh, I will also talk about briefly, uh, Bo Nix came uh, acquitted pretty favorably, as we mentioned in Underdogs content. They also did their QB rankings. Uh, Bo Nix, I think uh, I think one of the guys had, one of Josh or Hayden had Bo Nix ranked ahead of Penix. The other one had it flipped. Uh, but they still both thought that Bo Nix very viable here. So I do think that uh, the hive mind is coming along with the thing that I've thought for a while with Bo Nix uh, being a guy that's worth drafting who can come in and run an offense and do it really well. Um, so that's one to keep in mind. What I didn't like in that video is they both had Jaden Daniels as number four QB in the class. I think that that is one. I get how you land there. I think that is one that you look back on. I think there's a shot Jaden Daniels is QB one in this class. And I love Caleb Williams. I've again, he fucking, he was a part of the torching of my USC team that I love very much. Um, but that said, like he was still good. I think there's a shot for Jane Daniels of being an elite rusher, being a guy who does have the great passing value added. Um, again, one of the best EPA players that I've seen in all the numbers, and that includes coming back through last year for my AR articles, coming back through Jalen Hurts numbers, coming through Lamar numbers. I still think that the numbers look better for Jane Daniels than all those guys. And Lamar is the one that people will go like, oh, he's a better passer. I, I don't know. I, I think I could poke holes in that if I wanted to, but Lamar is great. The point is though that Jane Daniels, I think will also be great. And um doesn't mean that JJ McCarthy and Drake may can also be great. I think this is a great rookie class as I've said enough times, but I think that uh, putting Jay Daniels at four is one of those things that you look back on. You're going to be like, this is your, this is your Sam Bowie you know, moment. This is your, uh, your Greg Oden, Kevin Durant moment. That's, that's my, if this is our last big board draft. That's my last sal though. Is like, if you didn't draft enough Jay Daniels, I think you fucked up. I think you really fucked up. That just came off 1.5x speed, and man, is he talking slowly. Are we talking? <laughs> okay. Uh, call us the Rice Range. Look, if you're not taking Rasheed Rice in round 19, round 20, you're doing it wrong. Uh, Should have. I guess the one thing I could have maybe done was taking Johnny Wilson there, push Brendan Rice. Johnny Wilson getting a little more favorable steam. The ETR guys, again, talking – or not the uh, – the uh, underdog guys talked positively about him. The ETR guys talked positively about him as a tight end. They had Mike Renner, who used to be at PFF, and then went to that abortion of a project, the messenger. Um, Mike Renner was saying that he thinks that Johnny Wilson should convert to tight end now, and he'd be the number two tight end prospect in the class behind Brock Bowers. I still think he's legit as a receiver, too. Um, it's going to be a different skill set for sure. Going to be a little bit more of a, a different thing, but like he wants to play receiver. He's being brought into the draft as a receiver. I think if you take him at face value as receiver, he's still fine. And then maybe you have the out of he ends up being a skeleton key player who ends up playing reps at tight end too. But I, that move has like gone poorly enough enough times. I He played well as a receiver. He's better analytically than Keon Coleman, who everybody's jerking off left and right. Uh, Wilson is a little bigger. That's hard to keep up with for sure. But I think that he's a better player. Super fun team. Thank you. Added you on Twitter. I did a line with rookies on a smaller board. You are a legend and a scholar. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, sh I'm sure you did a great job with that team. I didn't realize you were eight minutes behind. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so, I figured you were, Chris, but hey, as long as you eventually realize it, that's fine. Ultimately, just watching the video is all you can do. That's all I can ask. Thank you. Bindles agrees on Johnny Wilson. I, I presume that's what it is. Oh, sent me a dick rating pick. DM. That's not part of the package here. That's my only fans package that we're not, we're not really selling the soft shooting it out there. All right. Two, seven, eight, two here. I don't think we need this pick. I also, well, do I, do I just take Greg Dortch? I'm really not a Greg Dortch guy, but he does seem to give you one spike week a year. Any rookies at all that I want a receiver? No. Tight end, Gene Bell, Cade Stover are fine, but I don't have the ultimate confidence there. 
You know what? This guy's a beautiful boy, even though I haven't taken a lot of him. Bo Nix, think he's going to get a good landing spot. Might be Denver. If it does, maybe we get a very low-owned Bo Nix, Marvin Mims combo. So that's going to be our final pick here. Three, seven, eight, two. Kyler Murray, Jaden Daniels, and Bo Nix at QB. Running back, Jalen Warren, Brian Robinson Jr., Devin Singletary, Marshawn Lloyd, Bucky Irving, Ray Davis, and Dylan Labe. Audric Estime, the only beautiful boy I'm missing. But I guess also Benson Brooks. Those guys would have been beautiful boys as rookies as well. MHJ, Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunze, Brian Thomas Jr., Xavier Leggett, Marvin Mims, Jalen McMillan, and Brendan Rice. Marvin Mims bringing the vet presence to show all these guys how it's done at wide receiver. The tight end, Trey McBride, Brock Bowers. If I'm right about this rookie class being like a Hall of Fame caliber rookie class, I think we got the best parts of it. So that's besides running back. So that's the good thing here. Um, otherwise, would have liked Troy Franklin on the team. Would have liked getting at least one of Benson, if not Benson and Brooks. I think if we got Benson and Brooks here, the team would have every rookie I value along with Troy Franklin. Um, I think that would be it. And then guys like Ricky Pearsall, uh, guys like Tez Walker, I'm okay with them too. They're probably second tier, third tier guys for me. Oh, that's it. Draft was a long one. Yeah, hour and five minutes. I told you guys it fucking felt long. <laughs> so I was right once again. Boy, what a pat on the back for me knowing when a draft feels like it's taking fucking forever. Uh, guys, please hit that like button before you go. Subscribe as well. Get drafts every Monday to Friday at 11 a.m. This big board, I don't know what it's going to fill, but we're going to keep trying to do drafts the rest of this week. And then next week, unless there's a new draft out there uh, before the NFL draft, what I'm going to do is review every position here uh, heading into the NFL draft, what I think the top guys are. Um, that's what I think we're going to try to cement to that. Uh, but there'll be something next week. I don't know what it'll be, but stay tuned for that. Probably, of course, my baby as well. Probably uh, com slash subscribe. Promo code splash in there. Gets you 50% off a month or a year. It is a great product. I will tell you that. We keep putting in new things, and I feel more excited about it by the day. And you will be too, really, if you, especially if you suck at sports betting. This tool will help you find your level, find the depth. But it's using market data from the winningest sports books around the world to properly price bets. And that's a big thing in terms of having success. Uh, plus 10 units yesterday, plus uh, seven the day before. Like, it's been crushing, and I'm really happy with the results and how it's looking. And uh, your support still matters a lot there. Stochastic, you guys aren't using it right now, but please play MLB, use Stochastic tools, uh, PGA, NASCAR, whatever you want to do. If you want to gamble right now with NFL, uh, you know, not in the front burner, not <laughs> – what the fuck? There's no such thing. Nobody says in the front burner. But that NFL in the back burner, take, play some other DFS sports. Use Stochastic Promo Code Splash. Get 15% off. Thank you to all these fine folks. Help me put the show on. I actually think I have to add in more names after yesterday. That's on me. Uh, but, of course, you two can support the show for 5 bucks a month. Hit the join button. You get a preview in Discord. Of course, VIP access here on the channel. Custom emojis and a whole lot more, including the Spags rankings coming out shortly after the NFL draft. And, of course, game responsibly if you do game. Follow me at Chris Spags. Follow us at Splash Play Pod. And I'll be back tomorrow with more. So enjoy your days, guys. Let's pray the big board doesn't fill. And good luck. Bye.